worst race riots since those two years ago in the Watt section of Los Angeles rocked New Jersey's largest city, Newark, for five consecutive days and nights. At least 24 persons are killed. More than 1,800 wounded, some 1,400 arrested. This is my film, Nico Newark. It's about me growing up in Newark as a kid in the 60s during the riots. Basically, the people that hung out in the diner, whether they were crooked cops or gangsters or prostitutes, they were my family. And uh, we were all listening to Motown on the jukebox together, and it was all good times until it went bad. This is Joseph Emmel, and I play Cookie in uh, Nico Newark. Cookie had a huge impact on Nick, um, especially talking with the real Nick. Um, he said that Cookie was almost like an uncle to him. And um, which is interesting when your father is a diner owner and then your uncle is a gangster and you can imagine you know the advice that one would give and if it was in good intentions or not you know my name is Giovanni Zuino I'm playing Vito the Italian Newark police officer Vito's character as a police officer represents uh, an issue where he may not have understood uh, what was going on, understood people, he had a bad attitude, he um, definitely didn't uh, treat people right. Finding the heart of the story, which we find ourselves uh, following Nick, the son of a Greek immigrant, and Artie, the African-American um, kid from the nearby projects. So really discovering and seeing that bond that they create in this time and trying to answer the question of how does something like that survive in a time that we find ourselves in, in 1967. Good afternoon and welcome back to My Harlem Portraits, the show that aims at shedding a light on the fundamental contribution of African Americans to the building of this country and on Black excellence. Today we're going to talk about a new beautiful movie titled Nico Newark, which had its premiere on November 5th. And we are talking to two very special guests, to Tracy, Tracy Washington Bagley, welcome. Thank you. And Ryan St. Clair, welcome. To both of you, welcome to my Harlem Portraits. So Tracy is a six-time Emmy Award-winning executive producer, and she's making her directorial debut with Nico Newark. Ryan is the writer and the producer of Nico Newark. Tracy, I start with the lady. You <laughs> are known for your work as an executive producer of Here and Now which is airing on WABC on Channel 7, and Sandra Bookman is the host. I watch it all the time. Thank you. <laughs> I love that show. It talks about the very important things and happening and events and people in the community and is extremely informative. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. You are also the producer of uh, Like It Is and several local and national shows, documentaries and specials. One recent one, very in interesting, very incredible, Race and Justice, which was sparked by the George Floyd murder. So that, that is also something I watch, it's really amazing. And you do this for ABC in New York, Philadelphia and Houston. Ryan, you are the co-founder of Little King Studio, a film production company which is owned by the Service Disabled Veteran. And you have worked on multiple films projects as a producer, written numerous scripts, and recently performed in the award-winning win film, Shots Fired. Congratulations. Thank you. For the award. I want to start this by thanking Irene Gandhi, who is my good friend, who put me in touch with you guys and made me discover this jewel that you had produced. Uh, Irene has been for many years the only Black publicist on Broadway, and she's still one of the few publicists on what, Black publicists on Broadway. So we owe her a lot. 
So how, this is a question for both of you. How did you get to meet Nico? And what made you both uh, decide to take up this challenge? Let's start with Tracy. Well, I, I met, <clears throat> excuse me, I met Ryan um, through a mutual associate, a publicist. And um, when he told me, you know, he gave me the background on the story, it just made sense for me uh, as a producer, given the fact that I, for so many, actually decades, <laughs> have been, you know, zeroing in on stories that are of importance to the African American community and also the Latin. Latino community or Latinx. And um, it was um, just very appealing to be able to bring that background to the set. And then at the at the same time, to bring Ryan's script alive. Um, and uh, we just, we just, um, we kind of felt that synergy from the very beginning. Which is what I felt with you, the whole company, everybody that I met at the premiere that you invited me to uh, are real people. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Ryan, what about you? How did you meet Nico? So I met Nick through um, a mutual friend. So he was at a film festival actually and met someone that was there. Um, he was actually part of a panel and that person, you know, Nick was like, hey, I have, you know, this, all this in my life. And I'd really like to um, put it in, in a show or film or, or whatnot. And the person he was talking to gave Nick my number. And then he reached out and called me and, you know, it's, we started meeting up and he was telling me different stories and stuff about his life. And, you know, we started discussing how we can make this work, putting it into a show or film or whatnot. And it started to evolve that way. Um, and it's it's amazing how far this whole project has come since then. So it started off really just being the two of us with him sharing stories with me at the, the local pub and then, you know, writing this script and really going. And then through 2020 is really when I started uh like really getting deep and, and writing this, like fully fleshing it out and everything, especially after everything with George Floyd and stuff, I started thinking that was like, you know, seeing everything that was going on now was very reminiscent of what was going on back then. And I'm and I was, thought it was interesting to put it through the perspective of the of the children, you know? Um, it's not a kid's film or kid's story or anything. Oh. Um, but you know kids are in these adult situations and stuff sometimes and it's unfortunate but um you know and how far this team has grown since then and and as tracy said the synergy everything is great having tracy i knew second i i talked to her i knew she was the one you know to bring on to this project and she did an amazing job and yeah it's just everyone that that was brought on i can't say enough about them but yeah that's kind of how it started with me and nick and then blossom into something I don't know if I even really ever imagined it to be this how it is now but yeah it's the the story is so moving so thought-provoking uh I had tears in my eyes when I was watching it thank god we were in the public space so <laughs> it. and it's beautifully done I mean beautifully done uh, the this is the story of Nico. This is really his story, right? Uh, his real name, Nick the Cypress. Mm -hmm. He's a child of Greek immigrants, and his father had a diner mm -hmm. in New York. And this film is set in 1967 during the hot summer, that hot summer during which there were um, race riots in Newark. And I must tell you, I never heard about that before. I didn't know there were race riots in Newark. Okay, I wasn't in this country at the time. I moved here in in the 90s, but uh, I never heard of that before. So tell me, Tracy, how did you go about 
bringing this, directing this movie to bring this real life story on in the film. And well, tell us a little bit of, of this, the story, a little bit, what you can tell. Well, yes, the movie was inspired by Nick's um, childhood story, which I think is just, it's loving, it's, um, it's inspiring, it's jarring, all of that together. And so I felt from the very beginning, in order to capture the attention of the audience, um, I think it was brilliant that Ryan um, took it from, you know, mostly from the perspective of the kids. However, at the same time, most people aren't or weren't aware of the uh, Newark riots because I guess it didn't get a lot of attention in comparison to other big cities, New York City, Chicago, LA riots. Um, and so I thought that combining real news footage of the riots and to weave that into the children's story would be a real way to engage the audience so that it would be um, uh, jarring and entertaining at the same time. Um, just a lot of emotions. It was layered with emotions and that was what I set out to do. Uh, and so you see in the beginning of the movie, we start out with authentic news footage Mm -hmm. And um, I think it worked. I wasn't sure at first. <laughs> it was but I think it worked. Yes. It really captured the attention immediately. Yeah. yeah. And I think in the character of Nico, we we captured Nick Deceprius, his his real personality. He's loving. He's, you know, he's um he's outspoken. And I'm sure he was like that as a kid. And um, he had his challenges with his dad. So all of, all of that, I believe, um, you you get to see in the film. Wonderful. It was really beautiful. And Ryan, you talked to Nick. And Nick said during the premiere that he had tried for years to write a script about what happened in his life because he was never able to talk about it. It was like a secret that mm -hmm. he had kept and he needed to get it out. And then if he couldn't do that, I mean, he met you and you did that for him. Tell me how it happened. So it just took a lot of conversations between us really. Um, you know, there were things like you just mentioned that were secret. So you know, some things with childhood trauma and things like that, it, it can be difficult for people to to say. And there's still things that he's told me, you know what I mean, that mm -hmm. we keep confidential. But it's it, it took a while to build that trust up in order to to really be able to find the story. And it just takes it just took a lot of listening, you know, no talking, just sitting there and just listening to him and letting him getting out and then building that trust factor. Um, and that's how we became a, a closer knit team and building trust even beyond to where, you know, he trusts me to be the producer and build the team up from there and hire everyone and lead and all this other stuff. And then, um, so yeah, uh, just a lot of listening it took to him. And he's also the executive producer, one of the executive producers of this movie. So yes. he also really engaged himself in into this and he was saying that he, he put all his <laughs> savings into yeah. helping to produce this movie which is incredible because it's a wonderful wonderful thing you've done all together so uh which were the best moment and the most difficult moments during this uh, shooting of the movie because you have child actors in it and Theodore Dalton who plays Nico and Walter Russell the third who plays Artie are amazing and there were firearms involved so it must have been a pretty difficult situation to handle you want to start Tracy so I would say the best moment for me um was when uh Nick got to see the completed film and 
you know, we had it up on the big screen at the venue, uh, the Gray Cliff, where we were having the gala or gala, however you want to say it. And he was so moved by what he saw and he just gave me this huge hug. And I, I don't think I'll ever forget that because, you know, when you're creating something, you're not sure and it's inspired by somebody's life. You want to get it right and you want it to be interesting, not just to that person, but to, you know, a vast audience. And, but, but particularly that person, you want to make sure you get it right. And he was just so happy. In terms of the production itself and on set, I think when we shot one of the scenes, which I don't want to give away because I want people to see it, um, it was very early, early in the morning. So sometime between one and three in the morning. And it was a very powerful scene. And we needed the kids to, you know, bring forth their A game, so to speak, and to be on point 100%. And there wasn't one time that they complained about being tired or not wanting to do it over and over again. And I remember, you know, I had a director's chair, which I hardly ever sat in, but it was it kind of reminded me that I was the director. I think that's why I had it. But anyway, <laughs> so, so I went over to um, Theo, who plays Nico, and uh, Artie, who plays, Wal you know, um, Walter Russell, who plays Artie. And I, I said to them, you can sit in my chair because I knew they were tired, but they never said it. And um, they just pulled through for me. I just, they were my little heroes. They were my little heroes. So that for me was the best time. Wonderful. And Ryan? So I think the the best time was actually this past Saturday. I think with the you know, seeing the, on, on November 5th, the gala and everything, just seeing all of the hard work and all of the challenges and time. And we put blood, sweat and tears into this because we didn't have a massive crew or, you know, a lot of stuff. So a lot of a lot of us were doing multiple things. and It took a lot of time, a lot of sleep deprivation. There was, you know, but it was uh, it was all worth it in the end because the the energy and the support that we all felt um from each other you know doing it as a as a team and we all like really synced as a team and everyone that came out to support us too you know the outpouring love and appreciation for it and it was just it was almost overwhelming how how great that was that was like yes you know it was so nice to feel and I, I wish I could just like relive it just one more time, just one more, <laughs> just to kind of, you know, but it was, uh, no, it was, it was amazing. And I mean, cause I don't even know where to begin on challenges. There's always challenges with everything. Um, but I just take it, I always try to take it from the perspective of it's preparation, right? So I welcome them, you know, there were challenges with scheduling, um, you know, Walter Russell, he's also on Broadway. So trying to have that schedule, but also sync it with everyone else's schedule to really find find that um making sure all the actors making sure we get the right team because uh if there's someone could be really good at something but if they just don't mix well with somebody else that they have to work close to it it just doesn't work you know what i mean it, it's nothing taken away from either one but it's just it's just how it is you have to really strategize everything so i mean there were so many challenges it's hard to say which one is more they all they all they all gave different um, challenges, right? It was all, if that makes sense. But um, but I, I loved every minute of it, you know? I would, I have no regrets. I, I would do it all over again. It was amazing. And it, uh, it prepares, every challenge prepares me for something in the future, so. And Tracy, the challenges for you? I think for me, I had to, you know, have a little conversation with myself and realize that um, I had the skill set to do this because I was second guessing myself in the beginning because, you know, I've been producing, you know, I've been with ABC for 30 years in different markets, own stations. I started in news. So I have the production background. I've worked with crews before, but in my head, I was thinking film, directing, scripted, you know, I, you know, am I going to be able to really do this? 
And then I realized that most of my training was transferable. Mm -hmm. um, and so I made a point from the very beginning, the difference would be to engage with actors, right? And so from the very beginning, from our table read, um, I made a point of going to each one and, and getting to know them. We had rehearsals. We almost treated it like a play so that they weren't on set for the first time working together, working with me or working with one another. And I think that that, that was challenging for me, but it I overcame it by just taking a different approach and just going for it. It's like, okay, I'm in it now. We're all in it. Um, some of us have done this many times and some of us are doing this for the first time, but we're all together. We're one team. And um, I think we really gel from the very beginning and you could feel that. Um, I, I think it would be hard to, to kind of pinpoint who has more experience than the other when it came to the actors. And part of that is, is giving them the confidence at the same time they were giving me confidence. So it was an even exchange. And um, I, I'm just really proud of the job that they did. It, it, it came through the movie, this connections between, among all of you. How did you choose the actors, particularly the two, the two main actors, the two boys? Ryan, Ryan chose Theo before I came on board. But one thing about Ryan and Nick, once they brought me on as a director, they they gave me my space and said, if you don't like them, you can start from the beginning. They never like pretty much, you know how they, you know, the term staying in your lane, everybody respected each other's um, roles. And so they had actors that they had already chosen. And, um, and I liked them. I mean, I, I looked at them and I said, you know what, this works. Uh, Walter Russell, I had been in touch with because he was on Here and Now for uh, Shut Up In My Bones, oh. Harlem School of the Arts, um, and MJ Musical. So I knew Walter and immediately I thought about him opposite of um, Theo, who played Nico. And we did uh, an audition with them together and it, it worked. It just, you know, it just worked. <laughs> And how did you choose Theo, Ryan? Um, we kind of knew fairly quickly. Uh, once we saw him, uh, we had him quick, you know, we had others that were candidates, but it was, for him, it was, it was pretty like, he had the, he had a look, he had, he had it all going. And then once we heard him read the first time, we were like, yep, that's good. And then, <laughs> yeah, so that, that's how we chose him. And then, you know, with Walter, it just like extra confirmed once we had, as Tracy mentioned, once we had them read together, it was like, good choice. <laughs> Fantastic. And the whole, everybody in the cast was really amazing. Uh, uh, was it Joseph that played the mafia guy? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We love him. I'm Italian, so I know he yeah. was right on point. <laughs> right on point. <laughs> he reminded me of many people that... <laughs> I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's he, see. This way. <laughs> yeah, he really became Cookie. I mean, he had his hair cut and he just, he became Cookie, you know, yeah. while we were shooting. And at the gala, it was funny because he walked over to me and I'm looking at him and I didn't recognize him. And he said, Tracy's Joseph. And I said, oh my God. Because <laughs> I, I only knew him. him. Yeah. I, I didn't know. recognize both of them. Uh, Joseph Hamel and Ryan Marco, I didn't recognize them at the uh, gala. I recognized Laverne Williams. Yes, yeah. Uh, we danced together. <laughs> yeah, Laverne is he's great too. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Everybody was amazing. Elizabeth Dimitrios was amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Elizabeth. And, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were all yeah. Yeah, it was all very beautiful. What is the message you want viewers to take home when they see this movie? Okay. I think for me that, um, you know, a lot of um, historical events that either we were part of or not, um, that there were, there were lives that were affected by it on a personal level, not just a news story. There, Yes, there were Newark riots, but 
what happened? How did it impact the lives of people who lived there? And I think that that's a story worth telling. So, you know, what happens with Nico after what we've shown in the film? You know, um, what about families that moved away? What about families that stayed there? So I think it, it's it's a good way to start a conversation yeah. about an event that we may or may not know much about. And to have a sequel also. Right. <laughs> Ryan? Um, yeah, I'm actually on the same lines as, as Tracy, you know, and like I was mentioning before of the, you know, seeing things through the eyes of the kids, you don't usually, you know, it's the adults that are in the forefront that you're seeing, they're the ones talking and they're the ones getting the interviews and stuff, but the, in, but the kids are so impressionable. They see and absorb everything and, you know, with the brain development and everything, they're just not, it's just not developed enough to be able to comprehend everything and, understand fully and know how to react and all that and it's and it's causes a lot of kids and in, in situations like that to grow up really fast and lose that innocence you know um but another thing i think it's parallel so you see little nick who's son of a greek immigrant and then Artie, african-american kid from the nearby projects you see that greek and african-americans it, it's a big takeaway i think too is that is also a show of how the Greek community stood with the African American community at this time when no one else really did. So those two are the biggest takeaways, I believe, for me with this film and showing everyone. Beautiful. We are coming to the end. What about the sequel to this movie? We'd have to talk to the writer. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> there's some stuff in the works. There's some stuff in the works. It's all all planned out so okay baby you know, it's all the time now yeah but uh, um you're gonna take this uh, short movie to film festivals right now absolutely mm -hmm. and hope to get it uh on some network streaming perhaps um fingers crossed yeah we'll but see. you have a network yeah, I'm gonna call a few people I know. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so we come to the end of this beautiful conversation. Uh, let us know when the movie is showing, mm -hmm. so that our viewers can go and see it because it's a movie that needs to be seen. And I thank you for this conversation, and thank you, my viewers, for being with us. We see you next Saturday, same time, 12.30, Spectrum 1993. Bye-bye.